Hey guys, so for the last part of this tools I use for game development series, um, I'm going to go through actually putting everything together in Game Maker and what it all looks like um, when it's imported and put together in a room, basically, more or less. So let's jump straight into it. And so when I finally get into Game Maker and I assemble everything, um, it ends up looking like this. Um, basically, there is um, a series of actual layers to everything, which we'll look at now. So at the very base, I have just the background, which for this, I just have it as a plain white background. And then I have this one um, actually has an asset layer for the floor because if you can see if I set it to play um, it actually has an animated background and I was not bothered with trying to do that via tile sets. I know you can, I know there's some ways around it but I thought you know what I'll save myself the time of actually figuring that out and if I have a background that requires um, assets. I'm just going to use assets for the animations. So, And I also have these docks um, on top and the boat because they're always going to be in the background layer. Um, the player is never going to be in front of them in this scene, so I just put them at the very back. Um, I then also have a set of path tiles, which are actually an isometric tile um, that's across it. So you can see I used part of this tile set here, um, in particular this kind of edge here to create that edge along. Um, and then I have things like decorations, um, which again these are all placed in story where the player is never really going to be behind them, so just down at the back there. Then. I do have a layer for layers under shadows, but there is actually nothing in this layer. Um, I kind of tried to set up the system for each room the same. So sometimes I'll have empty layers because I won't be using that layer in that specific room, but I might use it in a different room. So maybe there might be something that shows up underneath shadows, um, but still is an instance. So, And then I have shadows, which is just an object. <laughs> Um, right there. So this little shadow object that draws all the shadows underneath everything that is a child of the parent object shadow. <laughs> so um, everything that shows up underneath that will have a shadow. So the main character will have a shadow. Um, some of these items will have a shadow. Not everything because I don't want the shadows to be overwhelming either. So not everything in the depth layer actually has a shadow as well. Um, I also have a cutscenes layer. Um, I'm not sure why he's in the cutscenes layer for this specific room. Uh, that might be something I need to change. Um, but basically on the cutscenes layer what happens is all of the cutscenes spawn on top. So the cutscenes don't actually have depth in my game. So I have to be really careful about where everyone is placed in a room and what items they're overlapping because I don't want it to ruin the illusion that it has depth. Um, so I just have to make sure that characters don't walk behind objects and the like because it's all going to happen on this layer as a in-game sequence. So, um, and those sequences actually look kind of funny, like they just look like this. So sometimes it's as simple as that, um, sometimes it's something more complicated. You can see there's a lot of stuff happening actually along um, the actual track there. So this one there's a little bit more going on and it doesn't look like much. However, um, all of these things, these little codes mean something um, and it takes a bit of planning beforehand to actually then place this out. Um, I have to look in the room and actually assign and see where everything is um, and then place it together. Um, but it works out pretty well then, um, as long as I keep organized with everything.
um, it works out simple enough. And then that cutscene will play out over on top of everything in this little cutscenes layer and it'll take over this object so this object won't um, you know be doing its own separate thing um, so you won't see your player character just going off doing something else while the cutscene is playing on top but the most important layer the layer that makes everything happen and actually work the way it's supposed to is the solid tiles layer perhaps <laughs> The solid tiles layer is basically the layer where all of the things happen that you can't see. So all of the red lines are lines where there are solid objects and you can't stand on top of them. And the blue objects actually are either, um, some of them are cutscene activators, such as this one, and some of them are basically room exits, like this one, which um, takes some variables for where you'll land in the next room, what room you'll land in, is there a trigger required, so do you have to press a button to enter, is there a transition, so is there does it fade to black as you enter the screen or does it not, um, is it locked, is there text to display as you're going in, that kind of thing. Um, and then these green ones over here and here are actually um, sound effects. So I can place the sounds in certain areas and then set more parameters around them. So for here, I have the sound ID, um, which it takes from an array in the actual object itself. And then I have the range of that sound. So, and then based on that, it will play, and I can place it wherever I want really to affect that radius as well. And then it just magically works invisibly in its magical invisible ways. But each and every room has this sort of messy solid tiles layer to it um, behind everything. So that's fun. When it comes to testing, I have a main object that I use um, called object main that actually initiates at the start of everything. So I have a room called um, room first, and that is the room that everything first gets sent to. Um, so you start in that room and then you get immediately sent to wherever object main sends you to. So I have this thing called game state within object main. And so if I have the game state as just e-game-states.start, which is uh, game states is an enumerator, then it just starts the game as normal. Um, and then I also have testing, which is for testing the battle system. Um, and I can set basically the current battle <laughs> to be whatever battle I want it to load up to test. I also have um, the editor, which is actually the battle editor, which I um, am using to create new battles, essentially, and to change old ones. And it's basically just a um, little battle map editor that makes everything much quicker. Um, I also have an old overworld editor state, which is actually more like an overworld viewer state where I can just select um, what room I want to go into. So I actually just place whatever room I want to go into here and then load the room quickly. If I'm changing anything about the room, it comes in very handy. Um, quest test was one I had for a while where I was testing out different parts of quests with it. Um, and then there's cutscene testing which was a specific room that I sent myself to where I would test out cutscenes. And then there was a tutorial one that sends you to the tutorial room and a saving loading test, which was literally just for testing, saving and loading. Um, probably don't need that so much anymore. And then start. I don't know why start is the last one, but you know, takes a while to get everything working, I guess, before you can have just the start screen. Um, and the start screen just sends you to the main menu. As for importing sprites, um, I 
basically try I try to keep them organized but um, it's very difficult to keep organized because I'm not a terribly organized person but I do have um, character sprites specifically and then enemy sprites and this is something I do try to keep very organized because otherwise it gets tricky and as you can see it does import nice little animations um, I've used that um, sprite sheet system um, I was talking about where I name it um, basically underscore strip however many frames there are and yeah so that is how I import everything into Game Maker um, oh and I will talk about actually the music thing I was talking about earlier where it comes to testing if things loop so basically you do have a little player here and rather than waiting through the entire song I'm just I always just drag it to the end I'll play it for a little bit and then you can see it loops perfectly so I know then I don't have to change the looping of that and every time I import a new song I do this because otherwise it'll be annoying and I also give each an audio group um, if you're using Game Maker I advise using these audio groups so that you can adjust sounds um, sound volume separately so I have just two basic music and sound effects um, and everything goes underneath one of those two so yeah that's a handy thing to know about importing music so I hope that was interesting enough um, <laughs> Let me know if you'd like to see more behind the scenes videos or if you'd like to see more of any of the specific processes I went through today. Like if you'd like me to do a full video showing the process of making an animation or um, making a small piece of music maybe, I don't know. Um, don't forget to like and comment if this was useful to you and if you haven't yet then subscribe please if you enjoyed this video. Thank you. So again Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon.